Okay, so I came across this article that I just want to point out. This is one of the easiest financial mistakes to be avoided. And it was this article on Market Watch. Americans' love affair with their pickup trucks might be derailing their retirement plans. Um, I want to show you something. Add up. Show you how much money you could be potentially throwing around. But there were 13.2 million new pickups sold from 2013 to 2019 in the U.S. with monthly payments of as much as $1,300. Now, I'm not a genius, but um, I'm here to tell you that that's probably not the most judicious use of your money to spend $1,300 for a new on a new pickup and this basically is just all this new pickup is is a the illusion of wealth and you know just throwing a cock measuring contest out there so you can brag about your giant truck but uh, we're gonna read a little bit the Denton Texas couple pay four thousand four hundred dollars a month on their mortgage with four car loans and leases and student debt. Ms. Scott White said minimum required monthly credit card payments total about $700. The debt was manageable pre-pandemic. She said, this is like the number one reason why adopting a minimalist or a Spartan lifestyle, trying to just save as much as you can is just, a far more intelligent approach to life because she deferred lease payments on her infinity qx60 for three months and started paying again with unemployment benefits okay so she's paying on this qx infinity uh, how much is a lease on that qx60 lease Um, these payment calculator. But I wanted to see the price, but the average, average price paid $38,000. Okay. So why do you need this vehicle? This is the number one thing I don't understand. Why would... I have a lease right now, but I got the lowest lease I could get. And after this lease is up, I'm going to spend about eight grand on a pickup truck and just drive it into the ground. Her husband traded in his Ford F-150 in August for a lower cost car and reduced his original monthly payments of 820 by about $100. And his income covers the $2,100 mortgage. Okay. I, this seems to me to be people that are living wildly outside of their means. Maybe I, a monthly outlay of 820 is quite high for car payments, especially when you consider this family has credit card and three other car loans. 13 million trucks. Okay, here we go. Truck poor. For a 60 month loan at 4%, that's a monthly payment in the $800 to $1,300 range, depending on your down payment. And these numbers don't include extras like gas or insurance. So you could be effectively paying $1,800 to two grand a month for, you know, what? A 60 month loan, you know, it, it's, I, I, I don't I don't get it. So it's a five year loan. Let's just do five years. Let's just say two. Let's just say you put down five thousand dollars, eight hundred and thirty dollars a month. Put in your IRA, let's just say you get 10% per year. 
$72,000 that you would have set aside for your retirement. Instead, you pissed it away on a toy, buying a $40,000 or a touch higher than mine with the point remains. Spending priorities. I know I shouldn't judge other people's spending habits, but I'm constantly looking at decked out trucks and SUVs on the road, thinking to myself, I wonder if that person maxes out their 401k. Yeah, like you, like I said, man, this is a good way to, your vehicle is a good way to end up poor. I want you to think about this. If you watch my channel, I want you to think about this and the expensive cars that a lot of these YouTube gurus drive who are advising you on their finances. You know, Ryan Scribner is one of the worst ones. He recently did a video where he talks about, you know, driving a piece of crap car below his means. Yet, in I think it was 2017, he had a GTR, which is a $100,000 car, which tells me he's just making all his money off YouTube and he's not really that good with money. So... Pay attention to what kind of vehicles these YouTubers are driving. They say that they live really thrifty. So, yeah, it's the happiness factors. But I, I guarantee you, you're going to be much happier with a higher bank account and um, money for vacations and, you know, just whatever else you want, whatever else you want to do in life. It's better to just have that money set aside. So it's just I wanted to do a quick video on how your vehicle can make you poor. And it's just something that I say to people is, being poor sucks. Living like you're poor is fun. So just remember this, if you're going to buy a vehicle, I want you to just think about how much money that could be down the road if you just invested it. So thanks for watching, I'm out.